Hi there. Good evening, everybody. And um, welcome to our live feed, our story bedtime story with Mr. Ewing. Thanks for all your messages that you've been posting up last night and, uh, and today. And for your suggestions for stories tonight, we'll get to them in a moment or two. Uh, last night and tonight, we had more than 800 people watching the video. So that's amazing, really. We're building up a little bit of a following here, a little bit of a collection, because I think we've got 200 children in the school. So 800 is at least four times as many children as, or people watching as we have children in the school. So who is watching? We need to know. Post the message below um, on the feed and we'll try and read as many out as we can. If we get lots going by, then uh, we might struggle to keep up with all of that. Let's make tonight international. Yesterday was lovely that uh, Yaman and Mohammed tuned in from Iraq and were watching Storytime live. Hi Yaman and hi um, Mohammed. Um, and it just got us thinking, our school community is a very special little place. Uh, with lots of people with family all over the world. So get in touch with your family and either get them to watch it live or get them to watch the feed later on um, and post a message on to let us know where, which corners of the world our little story time has reached. So if you've got family in Australia, it's 20 past seven in the morning, give them a bell, tell them to get up and get out of bed 20 past seven, what are they doing lying in bed when they could be listening to story time and if you've got friends in America and maybe six hours or, or Central America maybe six hours, seven hours, eight hours ahead, no behind us at lunchtime, afternoon, give them a bell, tell them to have a, a, a to tune in and to send us a message and let us know where we are. Hi Aloysius, good to hear from you and I'm pleased that you're tuned in for this evening and hello again James. Um, hi Henry and Henry says hello to Miss Cunningham, hello Miss Cunningham and hello from Amir and Germana. So um, yeah, welcome to story time for our St Catharines community. A big shout out to some of our friends that are watching, our friends at Vinnie's. Um, they are a great charity in Newcastle and they help lots of the homeless people and the, um, those who are vulnerable do lots of fantastic things down at Blackfriars so big uh, shout out to our friends at Vinnie's and also to all our friends at St Cuthbert's Wallbottle Miss Barrett told me that um, she was watching last night and uh, we saw a nice message on Twitter today so hi to all our friends at St Cuthbert's in Wallbottle so let, let's get this going international and find out how far around the world we can go. Hope you've had a great day today. Beautiful weather outside. We've been blessed this week that we can spend a bit of time outdoors. And if we were at school, we'd probably spend a lot of time outdoors today. And I'm pleased that lots of you have sent us messages to say what you've been doing. So I've seen Max with his hula hooping. Um, that is something I'm going to try and get better at over these next few weeks. I'll say a, bit, a little bit about that in a moment or two. But um, Jaden's been out helping the, uh, in the garden with his grandparents. And um, Bella's been doing making obstacle courses in her garden. So that's been good to see. Rafa's uh, been busy in the garden doing outdoor stuff as well as doing some maths and English. And um, building a Lego rainbow. Let's get some rainbows up, folks. We have, we, we passed too many windows today. Uh, that don't have any rainbows in. It's a difficult time for lots of people, little ones and big ones. And um, and if we can make the time to put a rainbow in our window, it'll just bring a little bit of light into the lives of people as they pass by and just have a little gentle smile about that. And that's our school motto, of course, isn't it? The rainbow colours and let your light shine. That's what we're all about. Um, thanks to Darnell for sending in his fantastic poem, Mrs Dent, you will be so impressed when you see this. Um, a PowerPoint a poem about the ghost family and he even put sound effects in that, so that's fantastic. So well done uh, to Darnell. Can I say hello to Sharon Boyd? And um, Sharon works in the NHS and I want to say, Sharon, how much we all love the NHS and everybody working in the NHS at the moment. We know how busy things are for you all and um, we think that you're all amazing and that's all the boys and girls and all the adults in St Catherine's community so we're all behind you in the fantastic work that you're doing now and um, 
and will be doing over the next few weeks. Okay, so thanks. Welcome, story time. It's story time, so you better get on with it. Um, last night I asked you to think about our message of the week. It's, I know that it is okay for me to make mistakes. I made a little mistake, look. It's a little bit wet down there at the bottom. And I asked you to see if you could think of some stories that would go with that message of the week. Because when we have a Monday morning collective worship, that's what we do. We think about the message of the week and we always try and match it up with a story. Usually a story from the Bible. Um, and then we think back in the class about how we can apply that message. Um, so it is okay to make mistakes. Um, we make mistakes all the time as adults and as teachers in school. Uh, parents, you might think that um, that you make mistakes or you've, you've maybe not been great at support and learning today. Let me just tell you, we make mistakes all the time, but you don't get to see them. So it is okay for us to make mistakes. And boys and girls, that's how we learn from them. So I ask you to think about a story that we could use that would... Um, help us to think about that message and we had some suggestions we had um, suggestions from Rafa and from Joe and from Max and Charlie and um, I think that might have been all but uh, and I did say that the, the story that we used we would give a prize so tonight drum roll please oh, you can't get the production team you know um, the little elephant is going to go to uh, Joe because Joe suggested this story uh, called Alan's Big Scary Teeth and we're going to share this story in a moment or two. Um, thanks to those who suggested we'll give little prizes when you come back to school for everyone that suggested a storybook as well so thanks for that. So well done Joe um, and I'm pleased to hear that you and your family are feeling better. Um, just a couple of quick oh there's Ishak. Ishak uh, Raman has sent a message and he says he loves watching stories and he still misses St Catharines and his friends Oscar and Darnell. Isn't that lovely to see? And my and Erin in Glasgow has sent a message saying, Hi Uncle Michael, great job. Um, and Henry's cousin Heather, who used to go to St Catharines, watched the story yesterday from Australia. So we've gone halfway around the world, can we get back around the other way? Um, so that's lovely to see. And I noticed yesterday as well that we had messages posted on the Facebook thread from Hayley and from Joel and from Ella. And they went to St Catherine's School many, many years ago. In fact, I think they might be in their 30s now. So it was nice that they got in touch and um, sent messages. So who knows what you'll be doing when you're in your 30s. Um, for the children. Right, okay. So Alan's, oh, before, have you got your biscuit? I found my hot chocolate from last night. It was on the table, would you believe? Couldn't find it. There we are, there's my hot chocolate and there's the mug. And there's the famous Celtic football team. I love Celtic, as you know. And, um, and they wear a famous green and white strip. Famous the world over. My favorite color is green. <laughs> Coincidence. <laughs> Right, let's get on with the story. Alan's Big Scary Teeth is a story about an alligator called Alan. Not a crocodile, because you probably know a story about a crocodile, an enormous crocodile. Um, that's a story by Roald Dahl that we know very well. So let's have a look at this story and then we'll get on and, and slot in some messages as we, as we go through. Okay, here we go. Alan's Big Scary Teeth. Alan came from a long line of very scary alligators. He was known throughout the jungle for his scaring. It was what he did best. There he is reclining in the jungle. Alan would start each day not with Joe Wicks like we did. My goodness, I did it this morning. Have you tried it? Have you, have you had a go? Adults, have you had a go? That is hard work. Half an hour. And I did it with some of the staff in the school. We laughed at the bunny hops bit. Some of the children that were in school did it as well. One of them said to me at the end, Mr Ewing, your face is very red. It's tough. Don't know what my legs are going to be like in the morning. He would start each day polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing each of his big scary teeth for at least 10 minutes at a time. 
and you probably brush your teeth as well, morning and at night time. And after practicing his frightening faces in the mirror, do you ever do that? Do you ever practice frightening faces in the mirror? Go on, show me your best frightening face just now. Whoa, whoa, hold on, you're going to break this computer. Steady on. There's Alan practicing his frightening face in the mirror. He's impressing himself. And then he'd sneak into the jungle for his morning round of scaring. Alan went, and there's a sign there saying, Welcome to the jungle. Alan went, snap, snap, and grrr, grrr. And he said things like, I'm big scary Alan. Fear my razor sharp teeth. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads. The monkeys tumble from the trees. And the parrots screech in terrible terror. Look at them. The monkeys and the frogs and the parrots in terror. <laughs> I love being scary, laughed Alan. Not very nice, is it? After a long day of scaring the jungle animals, Alan would head back home to the swamp and he'd relax, finish the crossword in the jungle times and take out his false teeth. Nobody knew about Alan's false teeth. Can I just say, um, Miss Downey misses all of reception class. She sent a message to say she's loved seeing your Facebook messages and um, and showing, sending her photos. She keeps sending her photos because um, she loves seeing them. Have, I know lots of you have been on the school website and checked on the reception, the class pages, the reception class page, and uh, found the videos that Miss Downey made and posted up there to help with the phonics lessons and some maths lessons. So uh, that's a message from Miss Downey. Good night, teeth, he said after he'd taken them out. Sweet dreams, my scary snappers, Alan would say as he put them away carefully in his super secret hiding place. Have you got a secret, super secret hiding place that you leave your teeth? Hmm. Um, a message from year four, Mrs. Dent and Mrs. Berent. She hopes that, that they hope that you're all well and uh, you're keeping a diary of activities you're doing. I think that's a great idea, Mrs. Dent and Mrs. Brent, and I think we should all keep a diary of what we're doing. We're living through very different times, guys, and over the next few weeks and months, um, we're going to find out just how life is a little bit different for us. So it's good just to make a note in a diary or a notebook that we've sent home or a bit of paper at home, and I'd recommend adults do this as well, so that maybe in a year's time or two years, we can look back and just remind ourselves of just how different life was in March 2020. So keeping a diary is a great idea, um, just so that we don't lose all of the things that we're thinking and all of the things that we're doing. One morning, Barry the Beaver was up early collecting wood and he came across a dozing Alan. Terrified that Alan might wake up and gobble him whole, he quickly dived behind a bush. Phew, that was close thought Barry, just as a set of false teeth fell out of a bush with a very familiar snap, snap. A message from Miss Haddo and Mrs Phillips, um, they miss you hoops, uh, hoops and buckets and um, hopes everyone is okay and do nice things at home, indoors and outside too. Send her photos, says Miss Haddo, and um, she's going to be doing some wellbeing calls tomorrow, so uh, if you're in year three, you might get a phone call from Miss Haddo just to check how things are going, uh, that everything's all right. Uh, and it's just a nice way of us keeping in touch with you because it's important for us and it's Im we hope it's important for you too. Um, when Alan awoke, his teeth were gone. My teeth! My teeth! Where are my teeth? What could he do? Maybe no one would notice. Could he still be scary without them? He decided to head into the jungle as usual. And he made the frogs leap off the lily pads. The monkeys tumble from the trees and the parrots screech with laughter. Alan just wasn't very scary without his teeth. Look at that, 
Snap, snap, grrr. And they're not very scared, are they? Look at them, laughing away there. It's good to have a laugh. Maybe not at someone when they've lost their teeth, but it's good to have a laugh. Um, a message from Miss Barnes and um, Mrs. Miles and Mrs. Langlands. She's missing everyone. They are missing everyone lots. And they hope you're doing some lovely things and being very kind to everyone in your family. And Miss Barnes is going to make some phone calls tomorrow as well. And uh, she says, please post pictures of any activities that you're doing. Okay. Shall we see if we've got any more people watching? Um, yeah, there's Oscar saying hello. Oh, and somebody said, yeah, this is good. We talked about the NHS and um, somebody suggested that we gather in our gardens at 8 o'clock tomorrow night and make, do a big round of applause. Yeah. Kieran says hi and he's missing school and Darnell says hi and Nikki and Benny say hi. They're missing everybody. So that's nice to hear. Okay. Alan slunk back to the swamp. He had never been more embarrassed. He came from a long line of very scary alligators. Scaring was all he had ever known. What would Alan do now? There he is. With a sad, sad look on his face. And all the animals are waving him bye-bye. Poor Alan began to cry. Just a bit at first. But then the tears kept coming. He howled and he yowled more than all the jungle babies put together. And he couldn't stop crying until next morning when all the animals turned up at Alan's swamp with his big scary teeth. Just pause for a moment to let you know Miss Cunningham and Mrs Lambton say a big hello to everyone, all year six pupils. Uh, they love seeing your emails and the photos of the things you've been up to. Keep letting your light shine, year six. So there they are, the animals come back with Alan's big scary teeth. We'll give you back your teeth, said Frog. <gasps> really, said Alan. On one condition, said Parrot. On one condition, said Parrot. On one condition. It doesn't actually say that, but Parrots repeat themselves. You have to stop scaring us. But what will I do? I don't know how to do anything else. We have an idea. Ribbit, said Frog. I think he might just have had his dinner. And so every day, after polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing his big scary teeth, Alan headed into the jungle, passed the welcome to the jungle sign, and became Alan the gardener. Look, trimming bushes with his hair, uh, with his teeth. Alan the hairdresser. Snappy cuts, I like it. That's a good name for a shop. Oh, and I had a thought, maybe Alan the hairdresser might pass by all the people in St. Catharines over the next few weeks because we're going to be needing hairdressers especially if the hairdressers aren't going to be open for a few weeks maybe we could bring back the bowl yeah that's the next fashion the bowl haircut boys and girls ask your mum and dad ask your nan and granddad if they, uh, if they can remember what the bowl haircut used to look like I think actually I've got a photograph of me at primary school with a bowl haircut but if Alan the alligator comes round, no, no need for that. And Alan the dentist. And a big shout out to all the dentists out there as well. Wonderful people, how you can make those, such sense of those tiny little white things that we've got in our mouth and stop them from hurting when, when we've got toothache. But every night he became Alan, the big, scary storyteller, thrilling the jungle animals with his terrifying tales. There's nothing like a good story at bedtime. And there's Alan the alligator scaring the little animals in the jungle. And they're enjoying it as well, which is good, because sometimes it's good to hear a scary story. I don't think we'll do many scary stories in our um, bedtime story. Um, big shout out from Mrs. Debone and Miss Actan year two. Um, 
that she hopes that everyone's happy and safe and doing lots of fun activities with your fantastic families. Please send postcards and emails. And she's missing seeing everybody. Keep smiling, she says. Um, and we had a message, lovely message from Mrs Murray. I didn't get into trouble for taking Mrs Murray's book yesterday because I sneaked it back up to nursery yesterday. Mrs Murray told me she's been busy practising for story time and maybe, maybe next week, maybe some other time soon, Mrs Murray might share a story time with you. But she said um, she, it's, nursery is so quiet without our gorgeous little uh, folk and Mrs Murray and Mrs Nixon miss you all so much. Can't wait till we're all back together again. And I think that's true for everyone. We can't wait till we're all back together. Mrs Murray enjoyed talking to some of you on the phone and um, hearing about what you've been up to. Keep sending her photos and messages as we love to get them. And it really cheers us up. And it does with the Facebook messages as well. Bye for now, says Mrs Murray and Mrs Nixon. Um, they're both going upstairs to play in the home corner, but they promise to leave it as tidy as you would do nursery children. So that's a nice thing to do. <coughs> Back to Alan reading the scary stories. <laughs> he says, I love being scary, laughed Alan. And sometimes he even let Barry borrow his teeth. Well, that's a nice thing to do, isn't it? You lend somebody something. Um, Barry's got big, sharp, white teeth lovely so thanks very much joe for that that's a great book i hadn't read alan's big scary teeth before and uh, maybe some of you haven't heard it before but there you go um we now know it we've enjoyed it and um we'll look forward to tomorrow night's story with a message from year five mr seville said uh, he's missing everybody make sure you're taking time to do lovely things with your family um he can't wait to hear all about it when we're back together uh, don't be scared when he calls next week. And a big shout out to all our year fives because tonight was going to be the night, first night, when they were at Ford Castle on their residential. So we're sorry it hasn't worked out year five. I suppose the consolation is you should get a decent night's sleep tonight, whereas up at Ford Castle perhaps you wouldn't. Um, but I know you, some of you will be disappointed about that. Um, talking about year five, thanks Sarah for letting us know that you did a live history lesson all the way from Liverpool um, about World War Two, and talking about history, it was great to hear that Daisy and Jack have been teaching their mum history. That's what it's all about, guys. It's about learning and learning together. Um, so I said earlier about keeping a diary and making a note of things and and just at this time, it's important, I think, to try and just take a little bit of control of this. So let's not let this situation happen to us. If we can do something uh, and make some plans that are positive for the days and the weeks ahead, then let's do that and just take back a little bit of control. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, maybe set a little target. So, um, for example, I've never made bread. And over the next few weeks, I would like to learn how to make bread and to make some bread. And there's lots of help out there. So Food Nation, who have come into school and they help us in school, they've got a food Facebook page. And if you search for Food Nation, you'll see that they've got a plan for this week for some live streams on Facebook. And just like our stories, uh, they save them and they put them up there so you can access them later. And yesterday, they were making uh, flatbread, garlic flatbread, which is nice. Um, so simple recipes, they talk you through, little video they talk you through and that would be a good thing to be doing. Um, the other thing I'm going to have to learn how to do is hula hooping. Some of the boys and girls in school will know at lunchtime I've tried to do hula hoops and I can maybe get three in a row before they drop to the ground. That's not brilliant. So uh, I'd like to get a little bit better at hula hooping over the next couple of weeks and I'd like to make some bread. And I'd like to do, do the Joe Wicks half hour without looking like a tomato at the end of it. Okay, so I think that's a bit, we'll, we'll, we'll give a shout out to one or two people. Um, Micaiah saying hi, Mr Ewing, and he really enjoyed the story. That's very kind, thank you. Um, I've got lots of thumbs up here and smiley faces, that's lovely. Cody said he misses Miss Barnes. Um, Nikki and Benny are missing everybody. That's lovely. So we've had lots of, uh, we've had an, Australia there, um, that was earlier, um, and we need to try and catch up with all the other messages that have been going on there. So at the end of um, every day, folks, just before we leave, 
um, school at the end of every day and then on Friday after our well done assembly uh, we usually finish with a, a little prayer so we're going to finish our story time tonight because we've been thinking about it being okay for us to make mistakes we're going to finish with a prayer and boys and girls you know this prayer so your parents might not know it so you can help them and uh, perhaps tomorrow night or every night after because you know this prayer you'll be able to say this so um, what we do in school is we either join our hands to pray or we relax our hands on our lap just to create a little bit of space and a little bit of silence and a bit of stillness and we are about to say thank you to God for the day that we've had even if it's not been a perfect day there will be some things that we've done today that we'll learn from and um, mistakes that we've made that we'll learn from um, and when God said uh, when two or three people are gathered in his name then he is with us as well so we've gathered tonight as a community uh, which has been lovely and so I, God is with us this evening so we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen and we'll say our night prayer to keep us safe until we gather together again God our Father I come to say thank you for your love today thank you for my family and all the friends you give to me Guard me in the dark of night and in the morning. Send them. On behalf of the production team here, well, if I can day. Um, night, night. Catch you soon and keep in touch. Bye.